If we see something that we think is wrong or unjust or could be better, that we have each an individual responsibility to find a way to do something about it. And even better, if we can join with other like-minded people to really make a huge difference. And that I think that's something I really believe in. And it's really guided my writing, guided my work. And uh, so I guess you could say that I'm now a loudmouth Asian woman. Helen did not always speak loudly. Born in New Jersey to Chinese immigrants, she grew up shy and soft-spoken. Being the only Chinese family in the neighborhood, she often heard racist remarks and faced discrimination. When my mother and father tried to, to get one house, you know, they came home and said, oh, they wouldn't take our, they wouldn't take our money because we we're Chinese. And they told us we don't want any Orientals here. And uh, so my father was not one to back down on those things. He would really rail and write letters and uh, um, give us lectures about how wrong these things were. Helen began to make her own voice heard at Princeton, where she was a member of its first female graduating class. Women students and, and students of color represented a change and we were part of that. I mean, you know, we had demonstrations that I was part of. We saw ourselves as part of the civil rights movement and speaking up. Following the 1982 beating death of Vincent Chin by two white men, Helen drew national attention as her call to action caused Asian American groups across the country to protest the verdict. Vincent Chin would be alive today if he were not Asian. And there is no question about that in any of our minds. Do you think this trial would have occurred had not your group and, and other Asian Americans gotten involved and brought pressure to bear here and around the country? I don't think any civil rights trial occurs unless there's pressure. They didn't even spend one day in jail. They paid uh, the equivalent of, of what you'd pay for a used car. That was what they were fined. And I was just outraged. I mean, I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, we can be beaten to death like a dog, worse than a dog, with a baseball bat, and the killers will go scot-free. This is like the 1880s. You know, when I talk to young people today, that this isn't like, wow, I did this. It's like we all face these situations where should I speak up? Should I not? Will this be harmful to me? But, you know, I think something should be done. I, I want to say something. And the difference is to do nothing or to raise your hand. Helen also helped lead the fight for women's rights. In 1989, she landed what she called her dream job when she became executive editor of Ms. Magazine. It was thrilling to do it, to, to, um, to know that we were really doing path-breaking work and that it would make a difference somewhere. In 1992, she left Ms. and moved to San Francisco so she could be with her partner, Leah Shigamura. When they eventually married, they wanted the Chinese media to be there for the ceremony. We really did want to give the message that, hey, this isn't a white thing. This is something that is all over the world. So we want people to see that there are happy Asian American, you know, same-sex couples too. And uh, so, so we, we take that as a responsibility that we have. Helen is also the author of several notable books, including Asian American Dreams, The Emergence of an American People. For more than four decades, Helen Zia has made herself heard, not just with her voice, but with a written word and by taking action. She encourages the next generation of Asian Americans to do the same especially because all of the pressure and all of the stereotypes in society today are that they should be quiet. They should be the quiet model minority Asian American. And we have to break through that. And the only way we can break it is to say that here we are. We're not all the same. We don't all agree. In fact, we might have huge disagreements with each other. But nobody will know that unless we speak up.